Today I'm going to be installing this 800 watt inverter in a Subaru. This particular inverter because it is about as big as you can go without having to upgrade your battery system like having double batteries or even having to upgrade your alternator. Uh, you go to like the thousands you're really kind of pushing it and anything at like 1500 or above you definitely should have a really heavy duty alternator and two batteries so i did this one because it's cheap it's 80 bucks and i don't have to change anything on the vehicle i simply just have to hook it up so what we're going to need to install this today is some six gauge awg wire i'm probably only going to be running about eight feet of that we are going to need some self-tapping screws we're going to need some appropriate sized battery terminal eyelets oh shit and I just spilled my coffee that is great okay the coffee's cleaned up and I'm moving on we're gonna need some zip ties you're gonna need some shrink wrap you're gonna need some wire loom and I saved the most important thing for last you're gonna need an 80 amp inline fuse I actually hate this particular fuse. This is an audio fuse. It's like really cheap plastic. It, it says it's platinum coated, but it's junk. Uh, the fuse that I would have rather used is like an auto reset breaker, but for this type of amperage, the one that I wanted to use was like $80, whereas this one was like 10 bucks at Walmart, so I went with this one. Uh, good rule of thumbs to let you guys know is anytime you are running 800 watts the fuse on the dc side is almost like a straight 10 to 1 ratio uh, meaning 800 divided by 10 you have 80 so an 80 amp fuse is going to be appropriate for an 800 watt inverter uh, if you had a thousand watt inverter you'd be running a hundred amp fuse and you can see why i didn't want to go that high 100 amps i mean that's what they used to power houses with Nowadays, the standard's a 200 amp service, but some apartment complexes and stuff still run on 100 amp services. So it's a crazy amount of electric. We have to make sure our connections are super tight. We have to have really good crimps, and that's why we're using heat shrink over top of all of our connections so they can never pull apart, because you do not want 80 amps sparking. It'll melt down your engine bay. Okay, the first thing that I like to do is fuse placement. Um, so I'm looking at the engine bay here, and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this fuse. You don't want to be near anything. You don't want to have to run your wires over top of anything that a mechanic might have to access. Um, if you can get the fuses that hook directly onto the battery, that is the best kind of fuse because you're immediately fused. Uh, but for my case here, I think I'm going to put my fuse right around this area. I'm going to try to use this hole that's already here from factory so I don't have to drill this. So I'm thinking my fuse is going to go something like there. And what I like to do is put a piece of rubber underneath any time I'm doing this so that if any of my wires ever pulled out or arced a little bit, it would prevent it from hitting the metal right there. Okay, so my fuse is now mounted. Um, it's nice and tight. I can't move it. So the next step is you want to remove this fuse unhook your negative or your positive or both on your battery I usually just unhook the negative it's still dead it can't spark right now unless the negatives hooked up um, a lot of people say you have to unhook the positive it really doesn't matter either one will kill the battery connection uh, and then we want to plot how we're gonna get our power so in my case I want to run power from this stud right here to my fuse so you can see I've already cut this section of red wire right here and I'm gonna plot my path. I got about the exact length that I want. So I'm gonna take this red wire out now. I'm gonna crimp it, I'm gonna heat shrink it, and I'm gonna wire loom it, and then we're gonna put it back on. Okay, so here's my section of wire. What I did was I stripped the end of it, and what I used to strip it are these. It's actually Romex uh, strippers, and I use this big end right here. I bite down on it, and then I just rock it back and forth real gently, and then just pull the casing right off. And you want to strip it back far enough so that when you put these terminal connections in, they actually bottom out inside of here. Uh, I can't do it because I'm holding my phone with one hand, but I'm going to go ahead and slide this on, and then I'm going to be crimping. Six gauge wire is about the biggest that I will go and still use a pair of hand crimpers to crimp on these terminals. And when I'm done, I actually pull on this thing as hard as I can to make sure I cannot pull this off. 
anything bigger than six gauge, like if I would switch to four gauge or two gauge, I'm actually going to use a really, really heavy duty pair of uh, terminal crimpers. Um, so these are kind of expensive. So once you get to a gauge bigger than this, you really got to have some nice tools to put on a decent crimp. This is a little trick you can do if you only have a pair of hand crimpers, but you do have a vise and you're not getting your terminals tight enough, if they're really hard to compress, you can actually put the pliers in the vise and just crank it and just watch it compress it. Then you have a really, really solid connection. Okay, and the last step here is going to be to heat shrink these things on. there you have it you have an awesome connection here we are my wire is now ran to my fuse here's that end that you saw me crimp on and heat shrink it goes into my loom down around over up and to my fuse and you'll notice I had to add an anchor point right here well, I didn't have to but I wanted to add an anchor point right here so uh, I'm making a really harsh bend in this wire and it puts a lot of pressure on this fuse uh, and it could possibly pull the connection loose so by putting this anchor point here that picks up all the stress and I don't ever have to worry about my connection pulling out like I said this is 80 amps of unfused wire so if it did pull out and go here I mean it could start a fire so it's, it's pretty important that's really really tight Okay, the next problem that I have here is that I've been looking at this negative uh, on the battery and the wire coming off of it, and it's like a 8 gauge wire and probably a 6 gauge wire to run the entire motor and everything. So the added stress of an 80 amp uh, inverter might be too much for this wire's capacity. So I'm probably not gonna be able to run my uh, ground wire from my uh, inside to the firewall because this wire isn't sufficient to the battery. So I'm actually gonna run my own negative uh, to this terminal straight to my inverter uh, just so I know that it has the capacity. So I plotted my path to the inside of the car. I'm gonna go off the fuse right here, around here, follow the factory wiring across here. Then I'm gonna go down through this grommet hole, which I've already removed. So I took the grommet off, I cut a hole in it, and I fished my wire through it. I'm gonna push this wire into the inside right now to where I plan on mounting the inverter. Um, and then I'm gonna come back and pull it back a few inches, loom the part that's gonna be in the engine bay, um, and then finish this up. All right guys, so what I just did, I just got done looming this entire wire to the length that I wanted it. I cut the wire off to the length to where the one end here is gonna be going to my fuse, and the other end I made long enough to hook to the negative terminal on my battery down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this factory grommet back and I'm gonna push a couple inches of my loom through this firewall to give it protection. These things are a royal pain to get back in. Okay, so I got the grommet back into the firewall. Not gonna lie, that was really hard to put that grommet back in. Uh, you gotta start on like one side and then kinda like work your fingers around like a clockwise motion. And it really hurt my thumb putting that thing back in. Anyway, it's in. Don't want to talk about it anymore. So I left this loom purposely kind of long so that I could jam it through and have uh, the loom actually going through the grommet. So there we go. And then my end comes up. I have it already cut to where after I route it the way that I want it to, my positive will end up here 
and my negative is going to come around and hook directly to the battery. And I made it a little bit longer than I needed to because I can always trim it. Can't add more to it. Okay, and here we have it. All the wiring under the hood is done. This is my negative going directly to my battery. You can see the wire that I ran is probably just as thick as the factory wire. That's why I had to run it. Couldn't go off the factory ground, uh, well the chassis ground. It goes up, it comes out through my fuse, around, over, and punches down through the firewall. So the only thing that I have to do now is go inside and the two wires that I have inside simply hook them to the inverter and I'm done. Mount the inverter. That's it. So all the time you're really going to spend is out underneath this hood. Uh, this would probably, if I was hustling, I could probably do this in about an hour and a half, but stopping to shoot this video every couple minutes, this took like three hours. Uh, so it's a pretty simple install. Mounted. There was really no good spot to put this. I wanted to put this underneath the glove box and it wasn't flat. Even where I got it now was a bad spot to put it, but I really didn't have much of an option. There's what it looks like. Blue light comes on. So far, so good. Let's fire up the controller. See if we can eject the disc. Hey, look, it's Destiny.